So I think uh, I will stop the video on my part. <laughs> so make sure we have uh, enough uh, bandwidth uh, uh, for the voice. So first of all, and, and I hope everyone is doing well, right? And uh, I really hope the pandemic can be total, totally controlled and then uh, we can uh, be back to the normal lives, okay? And uh, also, it's uh, quite interesting, you know, uh, for the students who ask questions, uh, they can get some awards, right? So this is a very unique. Maybe people cannot wait for me to finish the talk so then they can ask questions. But anyway, you know, uh, this can be an interactive um, uh, session, right? So if uh, you have questions, uh, please uh, feel free to type into the chat window and then the uh, session chair can maybe stop me and ask the question, okay? All right, so let's start. Okay, so the workshop title is uh, Road for NN. So then let's take a look of the road for AI, right? So why AI becomes so popular, okay? So there are multiple factors. The first one is of course, uh, big data, okay? So every day, there's a large amount of data flood us, uh, right? So Facebook, Google, and uh, uh, let's see, Google can support uh, more than 100 languages, right? So then those just become uh, raw material to train a machine translation model, right? So this uh, could not be achieved previously, okay? And then for um, the computing side, right? So cloud computing, uh, is uh, so dominating, so it, then machine learning becomes more affordable. So these days, um, you know, as long as we have some GPUs and, uh, or, you know, as long as we have some credit from Amazon, from Google, right? And then we can leverage their computing power to train the model, right? It just becomes more affordable. And then the third parameter, it's of course uh, deep neural networks, uh, right? And uh, uh, we probably still remember Google started to recognize cats, okay? So this is like five, uh, six years ago, and uh, the quality is reaching or uh, exceeding human intelligence in many different domains, uh, right? not just cats, okay? So by the way, this uh, little cat is my own cat, okay? Pretty cute. And then we have the hardware advances, right? GPUs, uh, right? So this is uh, NVIDIA's uh, um, CEO, right? And uh, then IPGA's uh, GPUs, and right? So these uh, accelerators can really help pushing the machine learning, pushing the AI algorithm development, really uh, you know, push, pushing them forward rapidly. However, Okay, there's always a but, okay. So we are facing many different challenges. Uh, the first challenge is a huge compute demand. Okay, so here is the curve, uh, it's plotting, uh, uh, right? so this is uh, logarithmic, right? So it's an uh, exponential curve, okay? So then we know uh, uh, like six years ago, uh, AlexNet was invented and now we have this alpha go zero, et cetera. So what's the gap between six years ago and now? What's the computation demand gap? Can you guess? It's 300,000 X. So basically the compute demand doubles every three months. Okay, so this is much uh, more severe. Uh, you know, uh, you can think it's severe, right? Uh, then Moore's law, okay, so Moore's law is a good thing, right? And, uh, but this uh, compute demand, this you know, exponential uh, increase is not good, right? So, uh, you know, uh, if that's the case, if we do not have a very good design, and then the computation becomes so power hungry, and uh, then it's, uh, uh, you know, think about it, it's not even good for climate, Right, because just consuming so much electricity and uh, uh, you know contribute uh, uh, negatively uh, towards uh, climate change, right? Okay, 
So uh, on the left side is for training, and uh, on the right side, if we take a look, um, you know, similar trend is happening. Okay? So for the inference, right? So this is where uh, a lot of the um, classification decision making is made, right? It can be made uh, in the cloud, but now the trend is to really move to the edge, right? So I talk a little bit more about that trend, and then you can see both the uh, total number of operations and the total number of uh, parameters are increasing, right? So this trend is also very alarming. Number two, the challenge is a uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, right related, right? Because of the large amount of parameters we need for these uh, uh, high quality deep neural networks, and then it will require a huge amount of memory. And then uh, let's take a look, right? So using one example, right? So this is a VGG16, right? So uh, for many applications, we need to deal with uh, high definition inputs. And then this is extremely difficult for edge devices, right? So let's take a look here. So uh, starting from a convolutional layer two, the number, right? So the size of feature map already uh, you know, reached 250 megabyte, right? So then how do we really deal with this large amount of intermediate data becomes a big challenge. So then as a result, right? So um, people are really trying to figure out, right? How do we really meet the real time requirement, right? So here uh, I mentioned, you know, a lot of uh, video process uh, need real time, um, uh, you know, frame per second, right? And then uh, many compiling AI applications uh, such as uh, self-driving cars, UAVs, and uh, require millisecond uh, response, right? So because there's a, a safety kind of uh, critical need there, okay? So people did some um, uh, study if we, go into this real-time uh, domain, then not many deep neural network can actually qualify, right? So only the lightweight uh, deep neural networks can fit into this, uh, uh, this area. However, if it's not designed well, then their uh, quality of a result, so this accuracy will suffer, right? So how do you really meet high accuracy and the real time uh, constrained, you know, hardware, hardware resource constrained and power constrained, that's the fundamental challenge. Okay, so what can be an effective solution? So uh, most of us uh, are familiar with the existing solutions, which is a top down solution where the data scientists uh, will design the algorithms. Uh, Right, they mainly focus on high quality, high accuracy, etc. So, uh, there are various type of competitions, uh, like ImageNet, that was a competition, right? And then they try to fit the AI uh, algorithm on, onto the hardware, right, including the edge AI. But this uh, top down uh, effort actually has uh, quite several drawbacks. So, I will explain more pretty soon. And uh, actually, a new design method for Edge AI is required. And uh, in our uh, proposed idea, it's called algorithm and hardware co-design. And actually, many researchers, uh, maybe many in the audience, uh, are working on this as well. Okay, so we are just so we just started early. Okay, that that's all. Okay. Okay, so then what is a top-down uh, DN design and the deployment flow, right? So uh, first of all, so, so uh, we have a, a team uh, or, you know, a several smart uh, uh, graduate students, right? So uh, start to design the deep neural network uh, because uh, uh, now the framework becomes so flexible, right? So uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, it's relatively easy to really get access, okay? And then after the algorithm is designed and uh, you know, uh, we had uh, different software related optimizations such as quantization, pruning, et cetera, trying to minimize the complexity of the software itself and then try to map that to the hardware 
but um, because um, you know software and hardware and hardware are two different animals sometimes uh, they do not uh, uh, even talk to each other in the same language okay so then there must be a gap between uh, between them okay? so then naturally there is iteration and then the hope is okay. I can I can still maintain my software quality, right? And then try to implement in the hardware and meet all the requirements. Okay. So what are the drawbacks of this uh, top-down DNN design and the deployment uh, method? So then I kind of touched on this already, right? So software and hardware they have different metrics, and then many times this metrics are in conflict with each other, okay? So then it's uh, difficult to select appropriate reference DNN at the beginning as well, okay? So these days there are so many uh, choices also, and should I take uh, like a heavy duty DNN that's high, highly accurate and then just uh, prone it uh, very aggressively and try to map to the hardware, would, would it work? Or I just uh, build a lightweight DNN from scratch, or do I do go from the middle, right? So since there's uh, no guideline and uh, the design space is huge, and then if uh, people just uh, try it in an ad hoc way, then you know the final uh, solution is uh, really becoming unpredictable. Okay, and then so here, so we can see. Uh, uh, this is the top down, right? So in a graph format, so people would uh, try to design high, high quality software and then try to map it to the hardware. So each of them need multiple iterations. And then if it cannot converge, then you have these big global iterations, right? So in general, this can become very lengthy and then also become suboptimal. So then, so naturally, people would think, uh, okay, we cannot go through this kind of tedious, uh, uh, long iterative process. Can we design the software and the hardware simultaneously? You know, so uh, it's not an easy task, but at least that's the right question to ask. Okay. So what is a simultaneous algorithm accelerator co-design? Okay. So. Move this away. Okay. All right. So, con conventional hardware. Uh, so, uh, here I introduce uh, a NAS, right? So, this is a neural architecture search, right? So, this is an automated uh, neural architecture design, right? So, uh, that was uh, mainly advocated uh, by Google at the beginning, right? So, they have a huge amount of uh, computing power, right? So, they can automatically search neural architecture. And then later on, people realize, okay, when we do the neural architecture search, I better consider hardware. So you become hardware aware, NAS. However, the, here you can see the uh, hardware itself is not code co-searched. The hardware is fixed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then for the simultaneous uh, algorithm accelerator code line, we can see the accelerator is also uh, searched and the accelerator can change, right? So then they are co-searched and co-designed simultaneously, co-optimized, and at the end, after this co-design, both the DNN and the accelerator are the outputs. Okay, so uh, I just briefly talk about some some of our uh, DNN and accelerator co-design work. Okay, so. These are the <laughs> works we, we did and since uh, 2018. Actually, this first paper, as far as we know, uh, uh, you know, published in 2018, uh, first introduced the idea in you know, a conceptual level. Okay, and then we uh, start to implement this idea, and then our uh, first uh, kind of uh, fruit, right, uh, to materialize the idea is published in back 2019. And then we publish some other works, but uh, in this talk, due to the time limit, I'll mainly focus on the Skynet okay, and the EDD. Okay, 
So just uh, one slide to introduce uh, this uh, idea uh, we proposed in ICSICT 2018, right? So uh, we propose a, a co-design engine, okay? And the objective of the proposed co-design is to automatically generate both DN models and their corresponding implementations as pairs, okay? So it's no longer hardware, software, jumping to each other and hope uh, they agree with each other, right? So we just uh, right, right at the beginning, make sure they are friends and then grow together, okay? And improve each other together, okay? So as, as a result, we can shorten the DN development time by avoiding tedious situations between DN model and its accelerator designs. So, you know, just by look, uh, looking at this uh, graph, you can see it's uh, actually relatively simple, okay? So we have the hardware constraints. Uh, so here we use IPGA as a, a driver uh, kind of a platform, right? And then we have the different goals and, and then we have an IP pool, okay? And then um, we will use uh, these uh, uh, building blocks, right? So each IP is uh, supporting one unique uh, compute, computation component Right, and the components are the building blocks for the deep neural network as well, okay? So then we can co-search, and then eventually we can produce different solutions, and each, each solution com, uh, contains both the DNN and the uh, accelerator. All right, so then one year later, so this coding idea is materialized, okay? So we actually have a bi-directional idea, right? So you can see, on the top is the DNA model, on the bottom is a hardware accelerator, okay? And then we have bottom-up, which is architecture template guided DNA model search, okay? And then the top-down, then we can evaluate the DNAs through architecture template mapping, okay? So the, uh, both uh, of these things are happening simultaneously. So then, you know, so it's bi-directional, you can see, uh, after some iterations, right? So the DN model and the hardware accelerator pair is improving after it's converged, then we have both results at the end. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about the details, but then you can see the overall flow becomes uh, more, more complicated than the one we proposed one year earlier, okay? So this is because uh, high quality DNA design and the accelerator design are both challenging, okay? So then co-design significantly expands the design space. So it's difficult to converge and requires a novel search methodology. So here in a nutshell, uh, we can see we have the auto DNA. So it's a, basically, it's a NAS engine. It's an embedded NAS engine to search the DNA. And then the good thing is we have auto uh, heterosynthesis. So for each DNN, we uh, call the heterosynthesis to, uh, to generate the hardware. But of course, we do not uh, uh, call every time. Then that will be quite time consuming. We have a hardware a model to guide it. But then for the final results, we can call. So the whole thing becomes automated. Then you can see the auto uh, HRS will generate the hardware. And the auto DN will generate design methodology. Actually, we produce uh, this uh, uh, so called Skynet. Uh, uh, so, if uh, you pay attention to a uh, DAC uh, SDC, right? So, this is a system design contest, okay? Uh, we actually, uh, the Skynet actually won a double championship uh, uh, because uh, there are both IPG and GPU categories. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Skynet, uh, you know, became the, the best for both categories. Okay, so I'll introduce a little bit more uh, details uh, pretty soon. So, uh, okay, I have uh, about uh, 25 minutes. So let me uh, speed up a little bit, okay? So there are three stages for the Skynet uh, methodology, okay? So by the way, this method is also published in ML6 uh, this year, okay? So what are the three stages? The first one is uh, uh, select basic building blocks, okay? Second one is explore DNA and accelerator architectures, 
based on templates. Okay. And then the third one is uh, some fine toning, right? Add uh, additional features and, and uh, hardware deployment. Okay, so you can see here we mark uh, stage one, right? So uh, there are uh, uh, these um, uh, different building blocks that we designed, okay? And we call them bundle, and you can see uh, different bundles from bundle one to bundle N. And then we evaluate them. And then using this uh, bundle, we build a deep neural network on the stage two. And on the stage three, we add uh, uh, additional features. So, so that's the overall flow. So what is this uh, basic building block, so-called bundles? Okay. So bundle is a set of sequential DNA layers as building DNA, uh, as basic DNA building block. So then uh, you can see here bundle is um, uh, the building block for both the DNN and also the accelerator, right? So then when we design the bundle, we know, okay, this bundle can be, uh, how to say, uh, replicated, stacked, right? Uh, it can be expanded, right? And so then we can build the DNN, okay? But in the same time, uh, uh, the bundle is designed with hardware um, in mind, so then we know the bundle can be very efficiently implemented uh, in the hardware. So then this bundle becomes a bridge between the software and hardware. So then instead of fighting between software and hardware, we have a kind of a mediator, right? So the mediator is good for both, and then as long as we pick the good quality bundles, uh, then we cannot go wrong, right? So that's the design methodology. So here is uh, one example, right? So this is uh, like a building block, right? And then um, uh, when we can use this building block to build a uh, deep neural network, right? So here uh, we just replicate the bundle, uh, right? So this is like a ResNet type of uh, construction. So we know ResNet can go very deep, but each layer is uh, almost identical. Okay? But of course, you can expand on the different channels and all that. And then uh, the bundle also has the hardware implementation. So then the code design is, uh, how to say, well constructed and also well constrained. So we do not need to jump everywhere and trying to search. So uh, here is the architecture design, right? So this is using IPGA as a template. Uh, so I don't need to talk about uh, a lot of details here. So um, you know, what we try to emphasize is that we can have this uh, inter and intralayer IP reuse, okay? Because the resource is very limited, okay? We cannot just instantiate IPs everywhere, right? So I have to instance some, instantiate some important IPs and the IPs are shared. Okay, so then because the resource limited, the IP cannot be too big. So then typically you have to partition the input and then each of this chunk uh, will be run on the IP in different time. So it's a sharing IP, but in a pipeline way and then the IP can be shared across uh, different layers uh, as well. Okay, so, so this is like we are designing a dedicated processor with five stages, okay? All right, so then let's go through this uh, 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 step by step, okay? So I kind of uh, highlighted uh, the features already. So let me introduce a little bit more detail. So then this is a stage one. So we'll build the DNN from choosing the hardware or bundles, right? So, that the bundle capture hardware features and accuracy potentials, okay? So what we do is uh, we prepare the end components, we uh, enumerate bundles, so we actually have a search algorithm to search among different bundles and we evaluate them, okay? And then we have this Pareto curve for the bundles, right? And then we pick those in the Pareto curve. And then uh, after we are done with the building blocks, uh, so the next one is to explore the DNA architecture to meet the hardware software metrics, right? So I also explained, uh, so here we just replicate the bundles, right? But uh, then uh, we can uh, change uh, 
uh, channel expansion, right, for these different layers within the bundle. And across the bundle, we can decide whether we want to insert the pooling, right? So these are the, uh, like a hyperparameter we can tone, and they need to be searched, actually, because this is a NAS, right? So NAS as an embedded function in our coding and methodology. Okay, so then how do we really solve this multi-objective optimization problem, right? So it considers both DN accuracy and all that, and the hardware throughput and you know, power, right? So uh, things like that. So then what we do is, you know, as I explained already, select the selected bundle, uh, explore these uh, hyperparameters using PSO. Uh, it's a particle swarm optimization. So one type of uh, evolutionary algorithm, okay? And then we evaluate the DNN candidates on top of this. Okay. So then let's see how this uh, PSO works, okay? So we actually come up with a fitness uh, score, right? So it includes the, the DNN candidate accuracy and also candidate latency in hardware, okay? So then here you can see uh, this uh, tar is the targeted latency, and uh, this is the estimated latency for, for one candidate of the DNN, okay? So uh, alpha is an active. So then you can see if the estimated latency is uh, bigger than the target latency, then the fitness will drop, okay? So then here the fitness function will just naturally consider both DNN accuracy and the hardware friendliness. Okay. And then uh, the reason that we pick the PSO is that um, it can consider uh, the grouping uh, strategy, right? So here we actually have different groups. So within each group, we have different uh, DNN candidates. Uh, so uh, each DNN candidate uh, will have a different uh, uh, kind of a, uh, different parameters for the bundle stacking, for the channel expansion, et cetera, okay? All right, so then uh, what we do is uh, we launch uh, this PSO um, kind of search, right? So here uh, we basically use this high dimension vector, right? So this, uh, uh, right, uh, the number of stacks and right, channel expansion, et cetera, right? So this become the feature vectors, and we use them to do this uh, grouping-based search, okay? And then uh, PSO actually has both position and the velocity, okay? So then we consider the local best and group best, right? So the group best are trying to consider a kind of global optimization, so we will not get the stuck uh, at the local minimum. So we hope we can get some gr uh, grouping uh, strategy that can uh, pick out the high quality device. Okay, so then here it's guided by both local and, uh, and the global, and then finally uh, our goal is to pick the best candidate. All right, so then after that, uh, we can, uh, you know, we pick the good DNs, and then on top of that, we uh, can uh, fit in some customized um, uh, designs, right? So. Uh, so this is extremely helpful for this uh, DAC SDC competition. And so uh, we consider the small object detection, feature map reordering, et cetera. Also for hardware efficiency, we use RADU6 instead of RADU. So which means uh, any value greater than six will be just clipped uh, uh, at six, right? So then we can use less hardware bits to represent the values. Okay. And so here is uh, the top uh, design, right, for IPGA, right? So uh, on the right side, I already talked about the hardware uh, features. On the left side, uh, so this is the embedded IPGA. So we have the embedded core that's doing the, some kind of pre-processing. And then we have the PL, all right? So that uh, include all the IPs and, you know, on-chip buffer and uh, so efficient communication, so then we can uh, overlap communica communication with uh, computation. So let me quickly introduce this uh, uh, competition, right, DAC has DC competition. 
So it um, target uh, both GPU and IPGA, right? GPU is TX2, IPGA is Ultra uh, 96, okay? Both are targeting embedded systems. So for the image, uh, so if uh, uh, some of you uh, actually join the competition, you are uh, definitely familiar, right? So uh, there are 95 categories of target objects. And then the evaluation you need to consider both accuracy uh, throughput and energy, right? So it's not uh, just, uh, okay, I have very high speed, uh, but my accuracy is low, or I have very high accuracy, and it, but it runs very slow, right? So it has to be high accuracy, and in the same time, trying to meet the uh, real-time constraint, okay? So what we did is uh, we analyzed uh, the objects, you know, uh, con contained in this data set, and uh, we realize many of them are very small, right? So for example, 91% of all the objects are actually smaller than 9% of the input uh, image. And 31% of all the ob objects are smaller than 1% of the input image, right? So then we have to really pay attention how to detect the small objects, right? So here are some videos. Then you can see, actually, I don't know whether you can see or not, in the middle, this is actually a person riding on the horse, okay? And then on the right side, uh, you know, we are not uh, detecting this boat, but uh, we are detecting this person behind it, right? So you can see it's actually quite challenging, okay? So here is uh, the Skynet. Uh, architecture, right, based on our bidirectional search, okay. So you can see, indeed, uh, this is a uh, bundle-based, right, so they are identical, and then sometimes we insert uh, max pooling, but then the channel numbers are different, right, and then with some fine-tuning, we actually add uh, some uh, uh, bypass, uh, so, so then if you just keep going through all this, uh, the object become too small, and then we can bypass the object can be maintained, the size can be maintained. And the end, you have more feature map and that can help uh, for the re regression anyway, okay? So we can target both IPGA and uh, GPU, okay? So then here you can see this is overall design from the computation parallelization point of view. Okay, and then let's look at the results. Uh, so uh, this is uh, evaluated by 50K images in the official uh, test set. Uh, so then uh, let's introduce uh, our result. Uh, so uh, you can see we show both uh, 2018 and 2019 results, right? So let's show the Skynet GPU uh, 2019 result. So then you can see we are actually 2.3x uh, faster than the uh, second place and third place. Uh, and uh, actually our accuracy, right? So the IOU is the accuracy is also slightly better, okay? And uh, so then of course, everyone is better than the 2018 results, okay? So that made, made it fun, right? So the whole thing is improving. And so that, that becomes more competitive. So then let's uh, take a look of the FPGA part. So PGA part, uh, uh, we also got the first place, and then you can see the main reason is uh, we are 10% more accurate compared to the second place and, and the third place. Okay, so then after that, we extend the Skynet to real-time tracking problems, uh, right? So the tracking actually is uh, different uh, from uh, detection. Okay, so here we use this called 10K. And uh, so uh, cover different objects in the wild. Then you can see, right? So uh, you can run into complicated scenarios as speed are changing, uh, size are changing, occlusion, you know, and the angle and all that. It's uh, quite challenging. Okay. And uh, what we did is uh, we use uh, Skynet to replace ResNet 50 as the backbone, right? because this uh, state-of-the-art tracking algorithm actually used DNs as the backbone to extract the features. And uh, we evaluated the two state-of-the-art trackers using Skynet as the backbone. And then we can see, so the AO is an average overlap, right? So we can use that as the 
accuracy, right? So SR is the su success rate uh, when the IOU is uh, either 0 0.5 or 0 0.75, okay? So then uh, overall, we maintain the similar accuracy, but uh, we are about 60% or 70% faster. Okay, great. So then uh, maybe you will ask, is the codeline problem solved? Okay. And you can probably guess the, the answer is no. Okay. So in SkyNet, DNN and its accelerators are searched coordinately, so that's good. However, you can see it's kind of a core screen, right? So we design some DNNs, uh, you know, and then uh, it's not very comprehensive, okay? So, uh, and then we have this search algorithm, it's efficient, but uh, still it's kind of greedy, right? As a result, we are exploring limited code event space. So the next question is, is there a more elegant way for code event space formation and search? So then our goal is to form a unified and a holistic code design space and then search the code design space systematically and thoroughly. Okay. So that's the goal. And uh, so that's the next work I'm going to talk about uh, that's going to appear at the DAC uh, 2020, right? So actually I encourage all of you to attend DAC, right? It starts Monday, okay? So this work is called the EDD. And so uh, we probably all familiar with BDD, but this is a EDD, Efficient Differentiable DNN Architecture and Implementation Code Search. Okay, so what is the key idea and what is differentiable? Okay, so let me try to explain. So we have these uh, two design spaces or a search space, right? So the uh, upper one is a neural architecture search space, okay? And the bottom one is the implementation search space. So for the upper one and uh, uh, for NAS, uh, there are different ways to search the DNN. So uh, of course, uh, there are these evolutionary ways, uh, right? So uh, invented uh, by Google and others. And, and then later on, uh, there is another type of search. Uh, it's called the differentiable DNN search. Okay, so I will explain what is differentiable, right? So differentiable means uh, um, actually uh, people can use a uh, gradient descent to search the algorithm. So it's more fingering and can be much faster, okay? So, but then our goal is to have this merged neural architecture and the implementation search space. So it's not just A, it's A and I, but need to be differentiable, uh, need, to, need to be differentiable, okay? So then we can solve the AI co-search, A and I co-search using gradient descent. All right, so then let's take a look of uh, existing work formu uh, formulation and our proposed uh, co-design differentiable formulation. Okay, so for the, uh, for the existing one, it has, you know, uh, accuracy loss and the perform performance loss, right? But the performance loss uh, for most of the uh, NAS is considering a fixed implementation, I0, okay? So uh, for SkyNet, uh, uh, you know, if you pay attention to that fitness function, it's similar to this formula and uh, but uh, of course, we can also try to change the uh, uh, hardware implementation. So Skynet is one step uh, uh, further compared to the existing uh, kind of uh, NAS search. But our goal is to have a more elegant, right, efficient search algorithm. And so you can see we actually have three parts, okay? So then the, uh, you know, for the accuracy, it will consider both architecture and the implementation, right? Because implementation will definitely impact the accuracy, right? So we all know if uh, we can, uh, how to say, let's say we use IPG as a hardware, and then we can use LUTs to implement the binarized the DNN, right? But so, so extreme uh, uh, kind of a quantization, so then uh, the accuracy uh, can drop. Uh, or let's say the original architecture is a floating point uh, and then you quantize it. Uh, 
down to 8 bit, right? So sometimes the accuracy will, will drop too, right? So you can see indeed the implementation contribute to the accuracy as well. And then in the same time, we need to consider the performance uh, loss. So because uh, implementation impact the performance a lot, right? And then we can need to consider this in the whole search. And then in addition, we need to consider the resource, right? So we have to honor the resource constraint. Okay, so then the similar thing between the previous NAS and our proposed co-design is that uh, on the A part, uh, they are all differentiable, but the difference here is, as I mentioned, right, previously people understand uh, uh, only do a fixed implementation, we consider the implementation as a variable as well, and uh, this can be co-searched, and then we honor the constraint, so the challenge is how to formulate I as differentiable with respect to I, right? So I think that's the new challenge we need to uh, overcome, okay? So then uh, let's look at this overall flow, right? So this is a differentiable design space. Uh, so this part, we, uh, we can be familiar, you know, if you have studied the uh, neural architecture search, differentiable architecture search, uh, such as uh, darts, right? Some, some paper like that. Right? And then this part is brand new, right? So we'll have the implementation search as well. And then uh, everything is nasty together. So then we have a unified uh, coherent codeline space. So how does this work? Let's take a look of the differentiable neural architecture search. So what happened is, as I explained before, you still have this DNN, you have these blocks, right? This block is uh, like uh, the bundle. Uh, uh, you know, introduced by me, right? And previously, and uh, however, what happened is, uh, you know, uh, in this block, uh, it has the inputs, outputs, these are the tensors, and but you can have different op operations, uh, right? So, so let's say this operation is uh, this, uh, 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 this bundle, right? So count one by one, depth wise count k by k, et cetera, okay? And then you can have another operation, and it, it's like another bundle with a different uh, convolutional kind of computation, et cetera. So then here is uh, really introducing some flexibility and alternative to, to operate on the input and produce the output, okay? So then as long as uh, uh, these parameters are designed in such a way it's uh, differentiable, then uh, people can use uh, a supernet, a so-called supernet, to produce this DNN, and then this DNN, you can see it's naturally embed many, many different type of DNN solutions, right? So let's say I have a bunch of block, and then during search, the, for this block, I pick the OPIM, right? And then for the block down here, maybe I pick another operation, right? So all these are searched, but if it, because it's a differentiable, right? So at the end, you just uh, converge and then you can extract the good subnet, which become the final DNN. So that's the fundamental idea. Okay. So then for here, uh, what we did is uh, we actually borrowed uh, this idea invented by uh, you know, FDNet right? so, uh, last year. It's called the Gumbo Softmax. Right, so you can see, right, so to pick one particular operation, this is uh, actually, it's uh, not a continuous, uh, right? So to be, you know, to, to, to be differentiable, we need to make it continuous, right? So uh, Gumbo uh, softmax has that property, right? So after we introduce a Gumbo uh, distribution into the parameter, right? So then it's converted into continuous, right? So, I don't have uh, time to introduce the details, but that's the trick to drive uh, this uh, differentiable search on architecture side. And then on the uh, implementation side, we are facing uh, similar uh, challenges, but in a different way, right? So let's say this is a depth-wise uh, convolutional, and then we understand, okay, uh, quantization is important, okay? And then again, we have to pick one particular quantization and evaluate its impact, right? And then there are other 
hardware implementation parameters. So, so let's say we pick a qubit, right, this particular quantization. And then we have to consider uh, others, so like a parallelism, loop, loop tiling, and all these are the hardware search parameters, right? So we also need to consider them, okay? So, but the idea is the same. We use uh, Gumbo Softmax to convert uh, this uh, uh, non-continuous to continuous uh, function, right? So they become uh, uh, no differentiable. And then we can uh, consider different stages, right? So level by level. So for the first stage, we basically uh, consider, evaluate the alternative bit ways, but then under each bit ways, we can consider different implementation scenarios. So then you can see we have this performance function for a fixed quantization bit, right, to consider these different scenarios. So then, uh, for example, here, this is for the IPGA, right, depending on whether it's convolutional, depth of the convolution, right, so the latency can be evaluated. Similarly, resource can be evaluated, right, depending on the bit width, and, right, so these are hardware specific, okay. And then after we design uh, this uh, function for uh, uh, bit Base and for the hardware resources, uh, hardware implementations, then we can come back to this uh, operation level, right, right, stage. The operation level stage will need to consider all these uh, different implementation scenarios, right? So then this is a stage two. So I will not go through a lot of details. Uh, so this basically, and we use this combo distribution, consider all the quantization, so we can naturally embed the search space, okay? And then we uh, continue to push, come back to the, uh, this block level performance and resource and accuracy, et cetera, and until we uh, go back to the whole DNN. And then we do the search on top of that, okay? So then this is a differentiable co-search, right? Consider both accuracy and the implementation. So that a little bit uh, uh, more uh, detail, right? So I'm almost done. And uh, so here, uh, so consider the hardware part uh, if, uh, so this is a performance loss, right? So you're driving the loss function. You know, if uh, it's end-to-end -end latency, then the performance need to be summed up, right? for all the blocks, but if you're uh, thinking about throughput, then it's determined by the largest latency of all the blocks. So we need a max function, which is uh, not uh, differentiable. Then we are approximated using a log sum exponential uh, function, which is uh, differentiable. You know? So there are some other issues uh, such as uh, resource sharing and et cetera. Uh, so all this can be considered. Okay. So let's look at the experimental results. And using EDD, we actually produce the different uh, you know, neural networks uh, targeting GPU or recursive IPGA, which means uh, the IPs are shared. Okay? And pipeline IPGA, that means, okay, each layer has its dedicated IP on the IPGA, and then it's done in a pipeline way. Okay? So here are all the three different uh, EDD nets searched and then you can see they are quite different you know the details are in the paper okay so let's look at some results so EDD not one is targeting gpu okay so then we compared uh, with uh, some other hardware aware nas models right reported in the literature very recently including this fb net okay who used the uh, gumbo uh, softmax right so then you can see we actually have the best latency, right? So for example, we are 2x better than FBNet, okay? Then also um, compared to some other uh, results, right? So um, next, we uh, use the EDDNet2, right? So this is a targeting recursive IPGA, and we evaluate it on top of the chai DNN, okay? So, uh, you know, again, uh, we have similar test error, right? Similar accuracy. Right, and uh, however, we are uh, 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 again our latency is the best, and we also compare to DN Builder, right? So DN Builder was a work uh, done uh, through a collaboration between us and IBM, and uh, actually won the best paper award uh, from ICAD 2018, right? So uh, then we uh, actually 
can also beat uh, a DN builder. All right, so in conclusion, uh, we presented SkyMed and the hardware efficient DN design method, right? It's mainly focusing on bi directional DN accelerator design, and uh, we, you know, SkyMed is effective right, to capture the realistic hardware constraints. And then we propose this efficient uh, differentiable DN architecture, right, which is a fully simultaneous, elegant, and flexible, and we can target different uh, uh, hardware. Okay. So then maybe you ask again, so is the co-design problem solved? And then you can probably guess the answer is still no. And uh, this is actually an exciting research direction. You know, we can explore co-design for distributed AI, for heterogeneous and large scale AI, right? And the emerging AI technologies. So let me acknowledge uh, the funding agencies uh, and my collaborators, uh, right? So it's uh, mainly funded by C3SR and uh, ADSC, SRC, X Motors, uh, Boeing, and uh, Inspirit IoT. And uh, you know, many smart and hardworking uh, students and the postdoc re researchers uh, made a lot of contributions and also we collaborate with industrial researchers uh, and uh, with some other faculty members. I would like to uh, really acknowledge uh, Professor Tom Huang. And uh, we all know he's uh, considered uh, as the uh, founder of computer vision and who um, passed away right, um, very recently. So we, we will really remember him dearly. Okay? And uh, I also would like to acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. Chung Hao. Okay. I think she's in the audience. Uh, she, will, she will join Georgia Tech as an assistant professor uh, next year. Okay. And you know, she, she made a lot of contribution. And also my PhD student, uh, Xiao Fan Zhang and Yu Hongli, uh, and the uh, postdoc researcher, uh, Yao Chen, all of them made a lot of contribution. All right, thank you for your attention. Uh, and uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> it runs a little bit over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Demi. Thanks. Uh, it's a very exciting uh, keynote. In fact, uh, we have a many questions. Uh, I guess we cannot uh, answer all the questions. So what we will do is, uh, uh, there are two attendees raising their hand. Uh, you know, so we still have some time. You know, in the buffer. So I will let these. Uh, People ask the questions. Uh, meanwhile, I will send the uh, the list of questions to uh, your postdoc uh, uh, Tong. Uh, she is uh, actually helping asking uh, answering a lot of questions. Oh, so, okay, uh, great. <laughs> many of the oh. questions can be you know probably uh, answered in the chat box. Okay, so that's uh, right. Nothing. To, can you go first? Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor. This was such an informative talk. Uh, I just have one question. Yeah, uh, the basic uh, bundle architecture. So it maps the IPs and the DNN layers. My question is, how do you choose which bundle to use, and how do you like? Is there an iterative way to choose the IPs and the layers, or do you have a fixed criteria that these are the IPs which we will be using, and we have a fixed set of IPs which we evaluate every time? Right, right. Yeah. So that's a good question. So let's go back to this. Uh... Uh, bundle uh, idea, right? So, um, yeah, so which one is the, so if we go back here, right? So uh, what we did is uh, we looked at uh, some uh, recent um, kind of innovations in the DNN design domain, right? So uh, it's well known some bundle, bundles are just working better, right? So uh, we pick those uh, bundles uh, uh, as uh, some uh, fundamental building blocks, and but then we do need to evaluate them. So what uh, we do is uh, we actually, for each bundle, we insert a front end and a back end, and then we use a, a subset of images to train them, okay? And then, uh, you know, this bundle can be mapped to the hardware as well, so we know their latency as well. So then we will uh, evaluate all these bundles, and then we pick the Preto curve, right? So this, this you can say bundle accuracy, bundle latency, and so we pick the Preto curve on here, which means uh, 
if uh, a bundle is uh, more accurate, then we are willing to pay a little bit more hardware, right? If it's not uh, uh, more accurate, but it con consumes more hardware, then we will prune it away, right? So let's see this uh, point compared to this point, the accuracy is not as high, and then in the same time, it con con it's, uh, the latency is longer, right? So then, of course, this should be pruned away, right? So after we pick these bundles on the critical curve, then we use the bundle to build the DNA. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, thank thanks. you. Uh, yeah, next uh, we uh, Yeah, uh, Professor Damien, yeah, uh, very nice talk. Uh, I got one question regarding your uh, last, uh, you know, results, like the comparison uh, chart that you show. Uh, uh, you, you showed your uh, search is like a 2x better than the uh, uh, the rest uh, the chart yeah and uh, how about the energy perspective yeah that uh, how about the energy perspective the like a power consumption perspective oh that's a good question so Tom, uh, did we evaluate the power consumption Oh, hello. Be because we are using different GPUs, we didn't uh, include power consumption in this comparison. But uh, those, those GPUs, I think they have fairly similar power consumption. Say I 20 see. watts. Yeah. So these are all NVIDIA high-end GPUs. So I would assume there are no such quite big differences. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then another question is that uh, uh, you used the uh, you know uh, accelerator like a FPGA based the GPU based. Have you ever also considered that uh, the option with like a reconfigurable ASICs or some uh, some like a ASIC circuits that uh, perhaps that give us uh, even better performance or even lower power, especially once you already zoom out to your optimization targets. Yeah, right. So we uh, we consider the uh, ASIC, uh, and uh, uh, so um, you know we can learn uh, from uh, the IPGA experience, right? So mm -hmm. IPGA is a customized hardware, right? So uh, it's uh, just uh, very configurable. So for ASIC, right. uh, you know, it, it has uh, uh, most of the things are dedicated. Uh, hardware, uh, but maybe it has uh, some uh, reconfiguration. And all those hardware uh, characteristics uh, can be modeled within our EDD framework, uh, right? So mm -hmm. however, in this uh, particular paper, we didn't target it, but we do plan to target the ASIC designs uh, in our future work. Yes, they are type of ASIC called the reconfigurable ASICs, which is really targeted, actually implemented in the silicon, like with metal layers, so can be glueable, can be fusible, and which is targeted for reconfigurability. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. So we are uh, aware of that, and you know, so this is uh, definitely an interesting direction. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. I, I think actually, it's already the time. Uh, I'm sorry we don't have uh, enough time for further questions.